Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Central. Are you ready? This is the day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, somebody, give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Woo! Isn't God good? Now, we have a lot of people that are probably still trying to get out of bed. <laughs> what an unbelievably awesome day we had yesterday. So let me just give a little quick rundown. First of all, we had a float in the fair parade, which took first place for the religious uh, section. Woo! And it, it didn't hurt that we led the way, right? And here's the thing. As the float would go by, people would see the slogan for Embrace Grace, which it, the, you all know the slogan, pro-life pro, uh, saves the baby, pro-love saves them both. And they were hooping and hollering and taking pictures and pointing. Amen. We made an impact in the community. Hallelujah. And then last night, oh, how many of you were here last night? My goodness, we've had, I, I was up there probably two, 225 women probably with the, with the staff and everybody working. We probably had a, easily 250, 275 in here. It was insane. And the coolest thing was the altar service. Amen. God showed up. Wow. It's awesome, 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 awesome. So it's been a great weekend. Me and the, uh, the, my, my Pat Ethiopian brothers, we were uh, in San Antonio Friday night at a big church there and preached. And then I took them to the ranch and uh, I corrupted them with all the, all the American stuff, you know, gunpowder, right? <laughs> we had a great, great, great time. All right, you, uh, you may be seated. I got a few announcements to make. I'm sorry. Um, so you got a bulletin. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, today we're going to rest, glory to God, uh, so we don't have anything this afternoon, I don't guess. Oh, yes, we do. I was making myself a note. Yes, men, at 3 o'clock, we need men and, and some of you ladies that, can, that are strong, and uh, we're going to have to get all of these plants out of here and load it into a truck and trailer. So say 3 o'clock. That's, that's really weird. I started to text Wendy, like, can't you do it at like 4 or 5? That's right in the middle of my nap. But anyway, 3 o'clock... <laughs> Three o'clock, we're going to have to get all of these, uh, these plants uh, back to Sweeney floor. So we're going to need help loading them up, okay? Amen. Okay, how many of you are going to be here to help me? I'm going to be here. Pastor will be here at three o'clock. Who will be here? Looks like it's going to be me and Wendy. Okay, here's a couple more. Three. All right, thank you, brother. Thank you. All right, there will be a few of us. And then uh, next Sunday, everybody say next Sunday, is Pastor's Appreciation Lunch. Y'all know how much we love that. So what it's also going to be is our last service with Bethany and Guillermo Santiago. Amen. Wait, oh, I, that sucked the oxygen out of the room. Did you hear that? <clears throat> so it's a good thing. Bethany and Guillermo are going to St. Louis to go on staff at that church up there. That uh, I've been friends with that pastor for a while, and, and we've been doing some ministry up there with them. And, and I took my kids up and let them... Uh, let them meet, and that was the end of that story. So, <laughs> so we're going to celebrate Bethany and Guillermo. So do me a favor. Don't worry about honoring Pastor. You honor me all year long. Let's let, br br bring a little card or something, little, a, little, a little moving cash maybe, and let's bless Bethany and Guillermo. They're going to be moving out the uh, uh, 1st of November. But this will be their last service with us, he said. Uh, Embrace Grace Baby Shower, October 27th. Royal Ranger Gold Medal Lunch, uh, uh, Medal of Achievement and Lunch, October 29th. Wow. And then, uh, of course, November the 5th, it's the High Holy Day. Pastor will not be here. Uh, uh, but Gene Summers will be with us. I will be meditating in the woods come daylight, November the 5th. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, got a couple of things we're going to do before we kick this off. Now, most of you know that we don't, uh, we don't shut down the service to receive an offering. Once we begin worship, we're here for that. We're here to worship. This is a worship service. We're here to worship God, and so we're going to do it. So I want to get some preliminaries out of the way. If, uh, if I could ask uh, my Ethiopian brothers to come up here, Pastor Ianza, Pastor Adis, give them a hand clap. God. <clears throat> Uh, 
I asked Pastor Ianza and Adis to, uh, so there's a thing. Pastor Ianza is, uh, he, he is, uh, what are we, uh, 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 a Romo, Afa Romo, we are a Romo, yes. right? <laughs> they are the aggressive tribe. <laughs> he drives like me. <laughs> and and so they uh, they have this this um, I can't I, they've told me a thousand times what they call it but this when I was in the, in Ethiopia in June they uh, they they presented me with this at a church that that I preached at and uh, it was the most amazing thing this is like uh, uh, three weeks four weeks salary is what they paid for this thing it's a it's a a, a ceremonial kind of a, a, a drape that you, that that the the, hus the the old man of the family puts it on like twi like during Christmas you know when the, when the family gets together right okay and and my, we unfolded it and couldn't figure out how to fold it back so that's why I asked him to <laughs> all right here Oh, there's two there. I didn't know that. Just fake it. Just yeah. fake it. <laughs> and so, oh, wow. Oh, my good. Oh, I thought it just went over the shoulder. Lord, help it. I'm claustrophobic, right? You know that. So these colors... These colors represent the uh, the tribe, right? T can you tell me just a little about it? You want him to tell? Mm, yeah. Just, Does he know? He's not. He's not a Romo like me and you. Yeah. This is a clause that the father, the fathers of the Oromo people use. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so um, this this is a cloth that honorable uh, Oromo fathers, uh, tribe leaders, clan leaders wear this. All right, and so they gave it to me. We call them we call them abagada. Abagada. This is the Abagada. Now you are the, the Abagada. Now I'm the Abagada. All right. So I'm the honorable father of the house. Hallelujah. So as the honorable father of the house, we want to honor you too. Right? So in, 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 in America, well, actually in Texas, we have our own traditions, right? We have our own tradition. <laughs> so if you gentlemen would just uh, go stand down here below. We, we want to adorn you. Go to ste step down below. We want to adorn you. First of all, for Pastor Adis, we, uh, uh, we want to give you this beautiful. Now, this is a midnight blue. It looks black, but when you look at it next to Bobby's hat, you'll see it's kind of it's a bluish tint. So uh, this is, show him how to wear it, Bobby. Let's, let's adorn him. Amen. You are, <laughs> you are now officially a Texan. <laughs> no, you don't wear it backwards. Oh, you have it on backwards. Bobby put it on you backwards. You're so. <laughs> All right. Woo, woo, woo. Now, for the man of God, he didn't want a hat, uh, so we got him a pair of really nice, these are Lucchese uh, brand style ostrich boots. Hold on, come on, come on. Let's, Pastor, sit, sit right here. We have to adorn you. We have to adorn you with these boots. Yeah, we're going to, yeah, take your shoes off. We're going to, we're going to do this right. <laughs> you can, you can put the pads in later. Yeah, yeah, just just put the boots on. He, oh wow! Now genuine Texas ostrich. These are made in the USA, by the way. Te uh, yeah, Texas ostrich. It was imported. Yeah, be careful, Bobby's coming at you with a knife. Don't move. <laughs> Come stand right here, right here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, we're still, uh, we're still, 
There you go. Now, now that, that shows he's really got cattle is what that is. Oh, okay. Wow. You look the part, brother. Hallelujah. This is going to be our, our last service with, with my brothers, I tell you. They ha have they been a blessing to you this, this week? Wow. So I think we are probably like around eight. We're, we're planting eight or nine churches, uh, you know, maybe ten. I think by the time it's all said and done, we'll have a, take, received enough money for ten churches. We went to a big church in San Antonio uh, Friday night, huge church, beautiful church. They're planting five churches, and, they, and this is a, they're all Nigerian. The pastor said, I know I say that we're a Nigerian church. He said, tonight, we're Ethiopian. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stretch your hands out here. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for these men. I thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Lord, this relationship that you have, have, have begun, Lord, a year ago, Lord, is bringing, already bringing much fruit for the kingdom. And I ask you, Master, in the mighty name of Jesus, to bless Pastor Adis, Pastor Ayansa. God, open the floodgates of heaven over their lives. Pour, 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 pour out into them, Lord, grace and favor and protection. I thank you, Lord, that the angels of the Lord are encamping around about them to keep them, Lord, to protect them. Lord, I thank you that as they go into these Muslim-dominated areas, Lord God, they're shifting spiritual atmospheres. Come on, help me pray, church. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, when they walk into the city, Lord, hell recognizes their name. Glory to God. I thank you that, that walls come falling down. Lord, that, that seas part as they walk into that city and begin to plant the gospel of Jesus in a lost and dying region. Lord, I pray for wisdom and protection and, yes, Lord, even for finances. Lord, that you bless them coming in and you bless them going out. You bless them in the city. You bless them in the field. Father, bless these men of God, Lord, and protect them is our prayer. In the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said a great big loud. Yeah. Hallelujah. God bless you, gentlemen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. All right. Now, now we look the part, right? I look like I'm confused. But I'm not. <laughs> Stand to your feet today. Glory to God. I feel Jesus in this place. Don't you? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Why don't you stretch your hands up and just say, Lord, come on in. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you, we give you rain. We give you, uh, Lord, room in our lives. Lord, we just ask you to fill this house with your glory. Lord, thank you for this people. I thank you for, for this weekend. Lord, this, this has been a weekend you're going to mark in your books. Lord, there have been names recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life this weekend. And we give you thanks for all that you're doing. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Now, we, as again, we don't, uh, we, we're not going to pass a plate. So if you have your tithes and offerings, we have baskets here, baskets in the back, and uh, online, Givelify. God bless you. you. You guys ready to go? Man, y'all look sharp. Not as sharp as me, but you look sharp. I don't know about you guys, but I came here to worship the Lord this morning. Amen. I praise him in the valley. I praise him in the mountain. I praise when I'm sure, I praise when I'm doubting, I praise when outnumbered, I praise when surrounded, cause praise is the waters, hey, my enemies drowned
I'll praise when I don't. I'll praise because I know you're still in control. Yes, you are. My praise is a weapon. It's more than a shout.
just become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Oh, oh let us become, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your oh, when goodness. We're us become more aware of your presence. When we're at work, let us experience the glory of your presence. When we're at home cooking for our families, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience Lord, help us not become too busy to experience your presence on Monday and on Tuesday. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience. Won't you just ask him that one more time before we move on? Lord, let me become. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience.
Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Jesus shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my and Jesus from the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. I encourage you in this moment to begin to cry out the name. Don't be silent in this moment because that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to be quiet. He wants to muzzle the mouth of the Christian right now. In the name of Jesus, I call out my sister's salvation. I call out Ashley. I call out John. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Come on, come on, just yield to the Holy Ghost. Come on, give him, give him room, give him room, give him permission. I want you to pray that name, speak that name. I, I love the verse. That dark depression has got to leave. Every victim held captive by depression. Jesus said it in, in, in John, he, he said, you know, when he came out of the wilderness, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me, amen, to preach the gospel to the broke, the broken, the bound, the blind, and the bruised. You are in there somewhere. I want to tell you, and you're watching online, I want to declare to you that the anointing of the Lord is, a, it, God anointed Jesus. I love this, Acts 10, 38. How that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good and healing, say healing out loud. All, all that were, that were a 
oppressed by the devil because God was with him. Friend, I want to tell you this morning, God's here today with us. I said he's here today with us. Okay. No, he's here today with you. He's here with you. He's here for you. Shut up. Come on. L -l participate with me, would you? Would you please turn to your neighbor and tell him Jesus is here for you. Come on, just tell, just, just, they need to hear that to break the, break the power of depression, break the power of oppression, to, to stop the attack of the enemy. He went to the cross for you. He's here for you. I woke up this morning and, and, and the Holy Spirit was already speaking. I tell you, last night was one of the most amazing nights. Wendy and, and your team, y'all, oh my word, what, I, there's just not enough words. Come on, get, give the Lord a hand clap for these. Look, look it took a village. <laughs> it took a village to pull that off last night. The, the, the gas line, our gas line was cut off the day of the biggest banquet that we do. So we can't cook here in the church. And instead of killing each other, they problem solved. Amen. Just, 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 just like team guys, y'all did great. But. You know, it, it's, it's, it, it's just so amazing. So I woke up this morning, and I'm just, I'm hearing the voice of the Spirit. And friend, I want to tell you something. He's here today for you. You have not been, the, the sin or the, or the, the sin that was perpetrated against you did, does not disqualify you. You are not damaged goods. You're not damaged goods. The enemy will lie to you and tell you you're, you're so broken I want you to agree with him on that part. Yes, I'm broken before the Lord because God is attracted to that broken heart. Come on, that's the currency of heaven. That's what, that's what attracts his attention. When in your brokenness, you come to him and say, Father, I can't do this anymore. You get to the end of yourself. You're just getting to the beginning of what God can do. You're getting to the beginning of the supernatural, the bigger, the super to the natural of man doesn't begin to manifest until you reach the end of your own strength. My God, my God, my God. Come on, just close your eyes. Come, I just, I just, I feel that the Holy Spirit's just brooding over this house tonight. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I thank you. I thank you that every addiction, Lord, is crumbling right now. <laughs> Jesus, you're stretching out your hand, and that wall is, is beginning to fall brick by brick. By, come on. God's doing something for somebody here if you'll get a hold of it. That addiction, that dark addiction is breaking now in the name of Jesus. In the name of, come on, church. Come on, church. Until every dark addiction starts to break. Jesus. Declaring there is hope, hope. and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every fear and all anxiety to every soul, to every soul held captive by. Jesus. I speak hey. Jesus. Because hey. hey. your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn Say his name. Jesus. Say his name. Jesus. Speak his name over your family. Jesus. Listen to me. Yeah, you're going through hell right now. It's because you're not home yet. Come on, shake that depression off. It's just stuff. 
Oh, but pastor, they're not saved. They're not saved yet. It ain't over yet. I said it's not over yet. God hadn't shut the door yet. We are on the verge of, of Armageddon. We're on the verge of World War III. There is a move of God in this nation. The Spirit of the Lord is hovering over the United States of America. Amen. And like at the beginning, in the chaos, in the boiling cauldron of chaos, the Holy Ghost hovered over it and God spoke. God is about to speak. He is about to release a word into this nation that is going to be the salvation of many, but it will be the damnation of others. Come on, y'all. Come on. This is true. This is real. This is reality. Oh, he needs somebody to agree with him. Amen. Not get all caught up in your discouragement and depression. Amen. How many of you have struggled with depression in your past? Yeah. My hand's up there too. Yeah. You don't, you don't come to live there. Shake that mess off. Come on, we're not home yet. This is just junk. This is just stuff. Oh, but pastor, it's real stuff. Yeah, it's real stuff. You, you, you go bury some children and you, and you go through some hard times. Yeah, that's real stuff. But that's just stuff. This is not home. Amen. This ain't no playground. This is a battleground. Amen. Suck it up, buttercup. That's a theological term. Come on, you're going to have to get, get serious about the business of heaven. My Lord, my Lord. So, Father, right now, Lord, your presence is here to heal all that are oppressed of the enemy. And, Lord, not just the women. I thank you, Lord. Usually, usually it's the men up here dominating things. I thank you for our men of God in this house. But, Lord, men, women, boys, girls, it doesn't matter. You're here. to Lord, you're, we're not going to counsel this mess out. We need the blood of Jesus that has already defeated hell, death, and the grave. We need the blood of Jesus to cleanse our minds and our hearts of all unrighteousness. So right now, Father, according to 1 John 1, 9, we confess our sin to you. Come on, that's your chance. Just tell him, Lord, I've blown it. You know my life. I can't hide it from you. I've hid it from others, but I can't hide it from you. So I ask you, Lord, to come in and to forgive me. But, Lord, I'm not going to stop at forgiveness. Lord, you, your word says in 1 John 1, 9, you will not only forgive me, but you'll cleanse me. You'll wash me. So, Holy Spirit, I'm broken. I'm not broke. <laughs> I'm broken before you. Come and wash my heart cleanse my mind come on church pray it pray it pray it for yourself pray it for your family Lord Jesus Lord your word says you're attracted to that broken heart and that contrite spirit so Lord we're we're crying out to you this morning come come Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit cleanse wash heal in the name of Jesus so the Lord was, has been speaking to me recently about finding the lion inside of you and just really, you know, we can all get timid, you know, have that spirit of timidity and not speak and not get rowdy because we're worried about what it's going to come out and sounding like, even in our quiet place. You know, have, have you ever really shouted in your car? I know you have. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about some of us normal people. No, I'm kidding. You know, have you ever really just given a shout in your car by yourself? And if you're not even doing it by yourself, how much more will we not do it in the corporate body? And, and you know, can I be honest? Like, God's just really dealing with me. Find that lion within you. You know, it may look like I have a lion that's showing, but honestly, I have not. And Ernie came to my house one day. We did a little Bible study, and he talked about complaining. And he talked about, and it was just crazy, it was a Thursday night, and that next Sunday is when Pastor came up here and was talking about complaining, and it was, gave the same, ex I have witnesses, he was speaking the same message, used the same scriptural context, and I'm like, okay, God, I hear you. <laughs> you know, because there's circumstances that we will go through that we do not understand. You know, I'm 37, I'm going through menopause, and you think that it's like, it wrecked, it was, it's wrecking emotionally and I can complain and I can stand up here and complain wow 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 we now know why divorce happens so prevalently because 
and you don't think we're about to move on a mission and the devil is really angry about that and he's trying to quiet the lion within us you don't think he's he's a little bit worried hell is trembling just a little bit because we do have a lion with inside of us and god is really just saying quit the complaining depression stinks i would use another word but i won't in this microphone it stinks anxiety is terrible but we gotta find that lion inside of our bones and give him the praise our weapon like the song we sang this morning our weapon is our song our weapon is our praise our praise is what brings the walls of jericho down in the name of jesus so i i know you may not do it today but i encourage you to find your line inside of that car all by yourself in the house all by yourself but if you're not too scared to do it right now why don't you lift up your voice and speak the name of jesus Give him a hand clap of praise. (laughs) Glory to God. Pastors, if y'all were prepared, just a moment. Let me tell you, 45 years ago, this past February, amen, when I gave my heart to the Lord, if I'd have come into the church like this, I mean, I was in a big church, and there were three messages in tongues and interpretation, and I'm flipping out, you know, and I told my sister, there's a devil in that church. I'll never go back to one of them as long as I live. I was a 21-year-old drunk, living homeless, living in the back of my truck. Amen. It's about as I was almost bottomed out. There are people in worse shape than I was. But God. But God. If you'd have told that little 20-year-old boy, but you know, I'm sorry, if you're 20, I'm not I'm just saying selfish self-centered if you'd have told him what god was gonna do i'd I'd have called you a liar you on what you tripping on man but god he took that that wasted life that was my daughter that's my baby you ought to see my older one where there she is amen i got some i got some lionesses in my family Amen. They got my DNA. Now, they're all old women now, right? What does that make me? That makes me the old man. And I have that ability to pray generational blessings on my family. Come on, men of God. God has put something on the inside of you, sir, to to dispense to your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. Come on. I've only got greats. I got four greats now, so I'm I'm moving on. Glory to God. I told Kaylee back there a while ago. It's a weird place to be, to be the old man. But it is so exciting to see this generation coming up and getting a hold of God. And they're going to go further and do greater things than I did. Amen. Because because I've 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 kind of knocked some of the rocks out of the way and I've left a legacy. You're leaving a legacy, dads. Yeah, yeah, that's sobering thought, isn't it? I'm going to say it again, though. You need to hear it. You're leaving a legacy. Pay attention to what you're leaving behind you. 
Be intentional with what's how you live. Amen. Say no to some stuff. Okay, I'm not preaching. My, 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 my brother Adisa is preaching this morning, but I'm telling you, men of God, you need to learn to say no to some stuff. Your family it matters more. Come on, somebody. So one more time, we're going we're gonna to shout Jesus, and I'm going to ask Pastor Adisa to come and take this, this, this service over. Come on, sing it. Jesus, in, Jesus the in the streets. Jesus for my family over every enemy. Every enemy. I speak Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. Come on and shout it. Your name. Shout Jesus for my Go ahead. I want you to give my brother, Pastor Adisa, all the way from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Give him a hand. And, and we're going to give him an exemption today. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, so I gave him an exemption to wear the hat. Many, many years ago, many years ago, um, there was this lady who's so spiritual, God-loving lady. And um, it was a service like the one we just had. And there was a prayer and a worship, amazing worship that just li like just, just the one we had. And it was her turn to preach, and they said, okay, now um, her name is Gennet. Um, so now Atiye Gennet will come and uh, uh, preach to us. And she came up and she said, uh, uh, I'm going to say it in Amharic, and uh, I wish Pastor Aman was here. So... Uh, she said, Ahunishki, is he like Minich Amara Larich? So let me, can you please translate that for me? Ahunishki, is he like Mininagaral, Minich Amara Larich? So, what more can we add to what just happened? <laughs> What more can I say? I have nothing to say. What a worship. I'm so blessed. I'm so happy. Praise God. Amen. So just to be stable, I would like to invite Pastor Ayansa to come and greet you. And also, we were so grateful for our stay here. Uh, this is our last Sunday at Central, so we want to say thank you for all things. So I would like uh, to give the privilege for, to uh, Ethiopia Assemblies of God uh, General Superintendent to come and say thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, we are so grateful to God. 
ከሁሉ በላይ የምናመሰግነው የእግዚአብሔር መንፈስ በዚህ ቦታ ስላለ ነው our grateful our gratefulness is in full and exceeding because we have seen the presence of god at central amen hallelujah eh ihen endo lemalet le abaratatachu sayhon bewuste egziaber meggenet slet semany no i am saying this not just to encourage you uh, or to flower you but i feel it deep yes, down sir. in my heart yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. my prayer for you is one ihe yegziaber sat lezalalem kenante gar indinor no i pray that the fire that is among you will burn forever and ever yemaytafa yerevival sat iyenedede getas kemeta dres yinor until the lord comes and quenching um and quenching unstoppable fire may burn among you amen yigziaber menfes behail zi sisara silayen betam des bulonal ihen lemenfes qiddus sis yihone libachu benante lay yiqoyilachu we have seen god working in you and we have seen how sensitive you are to the move of the spirit and i pray that may god keep this spirit in you pastor brad zi benebern gize wengelen be practice yesebeken no yenoro yeqoye qoyo in our stay here we have been preached we have been preached by pastor brad not verbally but in his life fikrinna ingda mekebelin betegbar iyasayen neber he has shown us hospitality love practically igziabher betun bale betun lijochun na qari zamanun yibark may the lord bless him bless his wife bless all his family and his descendants እግዚአብሔር ወደፊት የሚያገለግለው አገልግሎት እስከ ዛሬ ካገለገለው በላይ እንደሆነ ይገባኛል I feel I feel this deeply what you have served in the past in the past compared to what is ahead of you is uncomparable ብዙ ስራ በፊት አለ you have a lot to do a, a, a lot is ahead of you እግዚአብሔር ክብሩን ባንተ ይገልጣል may the lord uh, reveal his power his anointing his glory upon your life amen pastor amanu na salomen igziaber abisto barkacho inde betachin dess bilon yenor no kenesu bet we have been living uh, it's just like for us is coming from one home to another home to stay at amanus uh, and uh, pastor amanuel and pastor um, uh, solomon's house እግዚአብሔር ቤታችንን እና ተዳራችንን ህይወታችንን አገልግሎታችንን ይባርክ may the lord bless your house your life your marriage and your uh, your, your offsprings ihen his nante demo sitqebelun inde wondim no yetekebelachun bemitru menfes no yetekebelachun fitachu benya lay lenya yeberra neberna igziaber fitun yabrallachu and for all of you you have you have received us with um a bright receiving uh, face so we pray that may the lord shine his face upon you amen mazmur 67 and lay indezi ilal igziabher su yegziabher miret na yegziabher bereket yegziaberum fit jibrallachu ilal psalm 671 says let the mercy of the lord be abundant on you yi bereket benante lay yihun let this bless this let this blessing be upon your life balfo samint indalkuñ yenya na yenante meggenañet divine no biye nebera as i said last week the relationship between central and uh, ethiopia symbols of god church is a divine ordination 
ይሄ ዲቫይን ካል ሆነ በስተቀር ይሄ እንደዚህ አይነት ریلیሽን የኛ ریلیሽንሺፕ ውስጥ ምንድነው የተፈጠረ ያለው ብዙ ነፍሳቶች ወደ ጌታ ነው የሚመጡት ቤተክርስቲያን ነው የሚተከለው uh we we the so many people are coming so many, so many souls are uh to the church and churches are plant, being planted ይሄ መለኮታዊ ካል ሆነ በስተቀር ይሄ ግንኙነት ቤተክርስቲያን ሊተከል አይችልም ለነፍሳት መዳን ምክንያት ሊሆን አይችልም and this is happening out of our relationship and partnership yeah. Yeah. if it's not if it's not from divine uh, ordained relationship this would have not been happening እኛኛ እናረጃለን ወደ ጌታ ልንሄድ እንችላለን ግን የምትተከለው ቤተክርስቲያን ነፍሳቶች እየደዳኑበት እስከመጨረሻ ይኖራሉ we may grow old we may go to the lord but the churches that are planted planted they will remain until the return of the lord እግዚአብሔር እየተመለከበት ነፍሳት እየደዳነበት ይኖራል ይቀራል ይሄ ደግሞ አንድ ብቻ አይደለም በብዙ ቸርቾች እንድትተከሉ ደሞ እግዚአብሔር ፈቃድ ሆኗል this will continue forever thus those places will be the, work, the the house of god and the worship will be there and this will continue to be in many churches multiple churches amen እግዚአብሔር አብስቶ ይባርካችሁ በጣም ነው ምንወዳችሁ በጣም ነው ምናከብራችሁ and we respect you በግሩፕ በግሩፕ ይሆናችሁ መጣችሁ የምትተክሉትን ቤተክርስቲያናችን ግን እንድታዩ በጣም ፈልጋለሁ እግዚአብሔር ዘመናችን ይባርክ we want you to come in a, in a, in a group in teams and uh, see the churches that are going to be planted Amen. through your support Amen. Amen God is good all the time, all the time. All the time. Amen Yeah So um do you know the greatest lie ever told who can tell me the greatest lie that has been ever told It's a lie It's a lie what is that lie it's the greatest lie ever told Mhm that too yes Oh that too yes we've seen that last night yes Yeah Oh who said that I want to see that face Who said oh, Okay that's amazing yeah we have seen that last night Yeah we could say but to me the greatest lie that has been ever told is Jesus is not risen. Huh? They say he's not risen. In Matthew 27:64 it says, "So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, these disciples may come, may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised raised from the dead this last deception will be worse than the first and exactly that's what they said after the resurrection of the the lord no he's not risen the disciples took him and they stole the body that was the greatest lie ever told Yeah. Um just recently there is um uh, a new introduction into Ethiopian banks, you know? So all of us are experiencing it just recently. I know this this is um um a daily routine for for the uh, for the American people, but it was just introduced to Ethiopians recently. So our banking system went into uh, uh digital so to say i don't know if it's the right word so they tell us you know you up uh, um, you know how much money we have they will just um send us a text or send us some some kind of you know there is also an app that tells us so it just like ding ding 
and he tells you, you are dated such amount of money. And also it says, ding, ding, you are credited this much amount of money. Are you with me? Yes. Yes, sir. Are, are you familiar with this? Ding, yes, ding, <laughs> ding, ding. It's a unique ding, ding. <laughs> it's not like text coming in from a friend or from family. So everybody, wherever they are, when that ding, ding comes, they just jump and look. Nobody would pass that ding, ding. And if it says dated, you know, you don't have to ask them. Just look at their face. Mm. If you say credited, <laughs> if I only your, uh, you, all, you, uh, the number of all of you, I would have sent you a text saying ding, ding. And the message you would get from me would be, you are credited. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. You are credited. So that is the title of my message this morning. You are credited. Hallelujah. You are all credited. Yes. It's not dated, but credited. You are all credited. So it's in in um, in, uh, in the in uh, in the in the book of uh, Genesis chapter fifteen. I want to start from there, and um, I will go to the Romans, where there is a detail of things. But I wouldn't I wouldn't be strict on it. If I have to stop somewhere, I will stop somewhere. So. It says, Genesis 15, I will read from verse 1. It says, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in, vision, in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Yes. Your very great reward. Who? But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain ch ch childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Does anybody feel like Abraham felt? God is coming and saying that I am your shield. I am your great reward. Look, Abraham. He says, what? What, what can you give me? I'm, I'm, I am hopeless. Look, if you give me anything, give me anything, give me the whole world. What, is, what good is that for me? Because I don't have a child. This man will be my heir. If anybody is fearful, just like Abraham, look what God is saying. And then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. 
He took him outside and said, look up to the sky and count the stars, if, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. Glory. If you believe the Lord, you will be credited. It will be credited righteousness Thank for you. you. Thank you. It will be credited for me a righteousness. It will be credited for you righteousness. You will be credited. That is our message. So, Abraham, for him to be credited, there are three things, three beliefs that he believed. So, if we could get to all three, that's fine. If we could stop one, that's fine. So, what is the first one that Abraham believed that would make him be credited as righteousness for him. Romans chapter 4, 18 to 25. Romans chapter 4, 18 to 25. I'll start reading from a verse 18. It says, so the first one is, he believed God existed. That was the first belief. That was the first phase that, God, that Abraham exerted upon God. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Who by their unrighteousness surpass, suppresses the truth. Oh, I'm sorry, chapter 1. Okay, chapter 1, sorry. My bad. Chapter 1, 18. Chapter 1, 18, okay. So, um, the first one is, he believed God existed. So, uh, the, the, the uh, verse 18 that I read, it's talking about the people around us. The kind of people that, suppresses the truth. Do you have this kind of people? Do we? Since what may be known about God is plain to them, it is plain. What needs to be known about God is plain. Because God has made it plain to them. We have to know that everything that needed to be known about God is already plainly explained and told. God is not hiding himself somewhere. He always reveals himself to everybody. So um, everybody knows about God. Everybody knows God existed. So, um, um, a family of uh, mine one time uh, went through um, uh, an airplane crash. So, um, actually, it's not a crash, but it, there was they were almost about to crash. It crashed, and but not really. Nobody died. Okay, I don't know how. What? What? What is? What would you say that? <laughs> so, whatever you are, you got it right. Yes, help me preach, please. <laughs> so he came and um, he he told us the story, and you know there was um, you know a turmoil. You know, you know the captain announced that you know buckle up, and you know the 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 hostesses were running here and there. Everybody is in trouble. Everybody is in a shock. At that time, everybody has one thing in mind: they are about to die. Yeah. 
Can you imagine what they said? All of them were saying, oh God, oh God, oh God. To the left, oh God. To the right, oh God. From the behind, oh God. From the front, oh God. All the shout in the plane was, oh God. And that family member told me that what we did not agree was which God. Which God? But everybody was shouting God. Everybody was shouting God because at the end, at that time, when the real stuff comes, it's only God. You know, this looks like the book of Jonah, you remember? When the, you know, when the, when the sheep was, you know, moving, tossing left and right, and everybody was about think, only thinking about what? Death. And they said, save us, God. Save us, God. And then they went to Jonah. Why don't you call upon your God? Who are you? I am Israelite, I am Hebrew. I serve the God who created the heaven and the earth. Hallelujah! See, that was the difference. Everybody was shouting to God on Jonah's boat, but there is only one who was shouting to the right God. So what was... To be known about God is not hidden. We know about God. Everybody, everybody knows that God existed. Um, for those of you who are a scholar like me, you didn't hear that. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you how scholar um, I am. So, I was in the elementary school. That's how a scholar I am, see? When I was in the elementary school, um, have you ever seen a, a globe? So my geography teacher, you know, always brings a, a globe to, to the class to show us, you know? So they would bring it. So a globe, if you see it, it's not straight like this. It's just like tilted, like this. 23 point what? Degree? centigrade is tilted. Do you know that? So whenever that globe brings, um, when, the, when that teacher brings the globe into the class, it always bothers me. <laughs> Why is it, you know, I, I wish I could, you know, kind of <laughs> make it straight. I always, it's, you know, it's whenever that teacher brings the globe, and I am in trouble. <laughs> it bothers me because it's just, just like this. I want it to be straight. <laughs> Do you know that? If that tilt, it's like 23, whatever, whatever, um, degree centigrade tilting, if it was straight, we will all be underwater. That tilt is the one that makes the earth survive. They know. We don't, but they know. The scientists know very well. They come and they tell us God doesn't exist, but they know if that happens, you know. Talk about the distance between the earth and the sun. If it was closing, we'll be fried cooked <laughs> it will be a little bit far we will be frozen yeah. hoo, 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 hoo. Yeah. the Lord is good yeah. anybody sees this and does not believe in God's existence that's amazing to me yeah. what would you say if I say if I stand this morning and I say, 
you know, this church, all the lights, the, the mat, the ceilings, the sound system, and everything you see, you know, this one, the, the, you know, where, you know, the, the last night's decoration and everything, it just happened, something banged, and it just happened like this. Why are you laughing at me? That's what Bing Bang theory tells us. How could that be? How could this light be? How could this, you know, everything in order? God exists. That's what Abraham believed. No proof for him. God did not argue with Abraham. He did not. Have you ever seen a talk or a conversation between Abraham and God? I exist. This is the proof. Have you ever seen that? No. He just believed that God existed. Let me tell you one more thing. It's a crazy one. So they were arguing. I told you one last uh, on Wednesday. So there is a scientist arguing with a, a believer, with a Christian. And he came to, you Christians are full. Okay, are we full? Okay, yeah. He said, how are we full? He said, this planet, this Earths have been here for 4.5 million years, and you guys say it's only 4,000 years. And he said it's proven with carbon testing and so on. And the believers heard him and said, okay, that's good. Let me tell you one thing, he said. Yes, okay. Have you... Uh, have you have you seen um, the scripture? What, what the scriptures about says about Adam? He said yes, I know about that. Okay, um, when Adam was created in the sixth day, and the uh, scientist interrupted, ah, you see, you say that the the, the the universe is created in in six days, in seven days, in six days. He said yes, we we say that too. Yes, so he said on the sixth day when Adam was created. When Adam was created on the sixth day, uh, technically, uh, how old is he? <laughs> on the sixth day, Adam, how old was Adam? Huh? He's a one-day child. <laughs> it's only one-day child. But look at Adam. How old was he? What does he look like? He was an adult, right? A full man, isn't it? Yeah, so the one-day child looks like when you see him, it's an old man. So that's how God operates. When you look at Adam, Adam is old. When you do a carbon testing on the, on the planet, might look, look old. <laughs> but it might be a one-day child. <laughs> When they think, in verse uh, 22 it says, although they claim to be wise, they became fool. You know, God's wisdom transcends all wisdoms. There is no argument that will win against the Bible. It's just that like we need to see it the right way way from the from the right angle from the right direction god exists our god lives there is no there is no argument on that Amen. so abraham believed that god existed do you believe that god exists if you believe god exists then it shall be 
credited to you as righteousness. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And Abraham also believed God is faithful. This is the second one. God is faithful and true to his word. Yes. Yeah, that's what Abraham believed. So there is, this, here is where um, a Roman 4 comes from 18 to 25. And it says, Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his, uh, we, 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 without weakening in his face, he faced the fact that his body was so was as good as dead, as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the, and Sarah Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet. He did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. Amen. But was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Amen. Amen. He was unwavered. He was not wavered through unbelief regarding the promise of God. God gave him a promise he never, he never doubted that promise. Last night, that was the problem that Adam and Eve faced. God told them. God spoke to them. But they doubted God. You remember last night? So that was the problem of Adam and Eve. Instead of believing what God has said to them, they were, they, they, they gave themselves. They put themselves vulnerable to the lie of the enemy. And they doubted God. Amen. But Abraham, unlike Adam and Eve, he believed. So is Sarah right. believed right. In God's promises, in God's word. Yet he did not waver. Uh, verse 21. Being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Does God has promised you anything? Do you have any promise from God? He has the power. Yes, sir. He has the power to bring it to pass. Amen. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. Because he believed in God's promises. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone. But also for us. To whom God will credit, will credit righteousness. Amen. It wasn't only for Adam, but also for us as well. For us who believe in him who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead also. Amen. Amen. So the other thing that Adam believed was he believed God is able. God is able. So it says his body was like dead. And Sarah's body was also like dead. There are many times in our lives we have given up on things. We say, this is done. 
It is past. I am never going to get this thing. This is beyond me. We gave up. But Ab Abraham believed God is able. He believed God is able even though my body is dead. Even though Sarah's womb is dead. But God is able. Because of his belief in God's ability, he received his reward. You remember when God asked him to sacrifice Isaac, his only son? What did Abraham say? What did Abraham say? By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embarked the promises was about to sacrifice his own, his, his one and only son. Even though God has said to him, it is through Isaac that he that your offspring will be reckoned why verse 19 hebrew 11 abraham reasoned that god could even raise the dead and so in the manner of speaking he did receive isaac back from the death. We need to believe that God is able to raise the dead. Amen. Let me tell you one thing. Do you know nobody has been resurrected before this time? Abraham have never seen anybody, anybody being resurrected. He never heard a testimony. Wow. Come on, preach. Never. Preach. Never, never. Yeah. I mean, for us, it's, it's, it might be a, a little bit easier to think that there is a, res a resurrection. Because we have seen, um, you know, people, we have read from the scripture that from the, when, the, when uh, Elijah's body fall on the grave, People were resurrected. We know the story of the resurrection of Lazarus. Yeah. We know the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. None of this has have happened. None of this have, has, has, has happened when Abraham believed. That's the kind of belief that God wants this time in us. Amen. Amen. A phase. I believe in God that he is able. Yeah. Even though it never happened, I believe him. That's the kind of faith God is expecting Amen. from us. I told you earlier, the greatest lie that has ever been told is Jesus is not resurrected. Do you know the first lie that was told in the New Testament? Jesus is not resurrected. That was the first lie that was told. And that lie roam, roams still around us. There are people who say that, you know, Jesus didn't die. Oh, he fainted. Yeah. No, 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 he never fainted. Right. He died on the cross. Yeah. Jesus died on the cross. Yeah. He never fainted. Right. He died on the cross. 
our Lord Jesus died on our, on our behalf on the cross. He never fainted. You know, there was someone on the left, someone on the right. So they came. You know, there was a celebration. On that celebration day, you know, that, those, you know the body, those, the crucified bodies should not be standing there. So they should, you know, for the sake of this, the celebration, they need to bring them down. Yeah. Wow. What kind of a preparation is that for, for, for a celebration, for a religious celebration? They came and they came and they broke the one on the right. They broke the bone so that the, he will die fast. So they came to the one on the left. They broke the bones, so that he will die fast. So when they come to Jesus, what does he say? Did they break? What does he say? He says they did not break his bones because he has already been dead. He died. He did not faint it. So it didn't, they, they didn't stop there. They said, oh, we need to check it still. We have to check, you know. So they, what did they do? They pierced it. Yeah. And water and blood came out of his body. He didn't faint it. He died. That was not enough. He was also buried. Not for a while, but three consecutive days he was buried. On the third day, he rose up from the dead. Grave could not hold him. Yeah. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of resurrection. Amen. He rose again from the dead. Amen. He did not faint it. He died. This is not enough. Thomas. I don't know if you like Thomas. I like Thomas. <laughs> I like him. Some, some people say he is a doubter. I say he's a confirmer. <laughs> Hallelujah. He confirmed. Oh, for sure. He confirmed. He disproved the lie of the liars. See, I have to put my fingers into the wind. I have to put my fingers into the wounded here. And he did. Amen. He never fainted. He never fainted. He died. <coughs> Abraham believed God exists. Do you believe that a God exists? Amen. Abraham believed that God is true and faithful to his word. Does God have said anything to you? Have you ever heard from God? Hold on to that. Trust me. Hold on to that. It will come to pass. The only thing is time and waiting. It will come to pass. Abraham believed in the power of the resurrection. Yes. The dead body he has, the dead body, the dead womb Sarah has, he said, it can be resurrected. Amen. About his son, he said, he can be resurrected. So let's believe 
on the resurrection. Amen. On the Lord, who is the Lord of resurrection. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. If those that are going to be baptized, if you would go ahead and uh, take your place. Amen. We Last night at the uh, women's banquet, there was uh, some folks that they said, we, we need to get baptized. And I'm like, we'll do it in the morning. Amen. So hallelujah to God. Why don't, you, uh, why don't you just close your eyes with me right now. Father, I thank you that you are a God that raises the dead. Oh, Jesus, you're so good. And Lord, whether they're dead dreams or dead visions, Lord, no matter, no matter what it feels like, maybe, maybe, Lord, someone has gone through divorce and it feels like there's just no future. I have nothing. Everything is dead. Lord, I thank you that you are a God that brings life to dead things. Hallelujah. Friends, just keep your heads bowed. No one looking around. If, you're, if God is speaking to you this morning, say, Pastor, that's me. I have some dreams that just seem to have died. I know God, God made me some promises, but it just doesn't seem like those promises are ever going to come to pass. Just lift your hand. Is that, is that you? Amen. One, two, yes, thank you. Just lift your hand. Three, four, five, thank you. Yes, sir. Six, seven. Hallelujah. Friend, I just, I, yeah. all morning today, I've just felt the Lord saying, I, I want to just love my people. I want to confirm my word to them. I want to put my arms around them. Friend, if you're here today and you're not saved, or you maybe you were, you were raised, I've, I've heard this a thousand times. Well, I was raised in church, but Lord, I thank you today that you're wrapping your arms around men and women and you're confirming your word to them, that you're real, that you, you didn't faint. <laughs> Lord, but you went to the cross, you went to the grave, and you did it in order to confirm your love for us, but Lord, to redeem us to redeem us from the hand of the enemy, to buy us back. I thank you for such love. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I want us to do it this way this morning. Amen. We're, and please, no one leave. This is just going to take a second. We're going to celebrate today. Amen. This life that just said, I want to I confirm my, my commitment to Jesus. I need to be baptized. So please don't leave. But where you are, if, if God's if God's talking to you, just 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 stand up. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna circle you right where you are. We're gonna pray with you. Say, Pastor, I, I I've got some dead things in my life. I need prayer about. Stand up. Thank you, dear. Somebody else, come on. If you raised your, we had like six. Thank you, ma'am. Somebody else. I've just thank you, sir. Somebody else, just stand up. Stand up. Thank you, ma'am. Hallelujah. Now, ladies, gentlemen, just just right there where you are. Just stand up and, and come around them and let's pray. That's what we do in this church. We're, we're interactive. That's what somebody said. That's an interactive church. Yeah, we don't sit in one place and spectate. We're here to worship. I'm going to go and I'm going to prepare for this baptismal service while y'all pray that God brings life. And, and if, if maybe you're not standing yet, maybe you just grab some of those folks and say, would you pray for me? If you need to know Jesus, we're here to pray with you. Amen. Go ahead. Love's like a hurricane. I am a tree. Bending beneath the weight of his winds and mercy. And he is jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. I am a tree. Bending beneath the weight of his winds and mercy. sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us so and oh Oh, and 
are for me and oh how he loves us so oh, come on church oh how he loves us how he loves us so oh, come on can you sing it and oh how he loves us so oh, and oh how portion and he is our prize strong to redemption come on everybody if you will just stand in this place for grace is an ocean and we are all sinking can you just worship him for a moment for heaven meets her like a sloppy wet kiss and my heart turns violently inside of my chest and I don't have time to maintain these regrets when This is Monica. I had the privilege of praying with Monica last night, amen, at these altars. And I just said, what can we do for you? Y'all can come on up here. Come on up here and stand right there. She said, I need to be baptized. What is water baptism? There's a lot of confusion. Baptism is not salvation. The Bible says baptism is a response. They say response. Y'all just responded. I told you to do something and you did it. Baptism is a response of a heart that has been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Amen? Come on. Monica had an encounter with God last night. And as a result of that encounter, she said, I want to be baptized. I want to follow Jesus. Are you listening to me? So I want to encourage you. If, you, if, you have, if you've been walking with God and you're not... You, you know, you, you've never been baptized. This is a step of obedience, yes, but it's more than obedience. Monica, this is identification. You are identifying with the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. You're identifying with the church. You're connecting to the body. Amen? In some countries, they don't mind if you go to church, but don't be baptized. They'll, they'll, they'll cut you off. They'll kill you, or, 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 or they'll have a funeral and pretend you're dead because that, that baptism is going too far. I'm glad Monica made the decision last night. She said, I want to go too far for Jesus. Yeah. Woo! Amen. You want to say anything? You want to tell us? You want to say anything? No. No? Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, Monica. Monica, then according, take one step up. according to your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your pledge to lead your old life, and to walk with Jesus in a brand new way. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now stretch your hands this way. Father, I thank you for the new life. I thank you for the fullness of God. Lord, this is but the beginning in Monica's life and in her family. Show yourself strong, Lord. Fill her. Use her. And magnify your great name through Monica's life. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Amen. And we'll wait. Anybody else, you say, I need to get baptized. You didn't come prepared, but we'll dunk you and take you out this side door here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Folks, isn't God good? I said, isn't he good? Wow. There's been such a, such a heavy presence of God in this house today, last night. Uh, really, really, just every time we get together, God shows up. And it's not to be kept in this house. It's to be walked out in this community. We, so I encourage you, amen, be Jesus with skin on. Come on, look at your neighbor say, be Jesus with skin on. What does that mean? That means you carry him with you. Carry him as you leave this place today. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that many in here this morning, Lord, they've experienced the power of the resurrection. Lord, I thank you that by faith their dead dreams are coming to life. And Lord, I thank you for the, for the benefit of, of, of dead dreams because that begins a prophetic process where you begin to create in us the, the capacity, the spiritual capacity to be a possessor of what you promised. So today by faith, Lord, we're going to receive the promises of God. I pray your blessing upon this people. I pray, God, you bless them coming in. You bless them going out. You bless them in the city. You bless them in the field. Let them become the epitome, the definition of what it is to be a blessed child of God. Lord, we're going to give you thanks and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, men and women too. If you got muscles, come here. Three o'clock, we're going to get these plants out of here. Be back tonight at six, tomorrow at seven for prayer, and Wednesday night, seven for study. I love you. Be blessed. Oh,